in live, please type in hashtag live. Now, a lot of people watch our replays. If you're watching our replays, just type in hashtag replay just so I know that you're watching. Property guru, George Markowski from Positive Property Solution joins us now. George, good morning to you. How are you, good George? Morning. You've got to hang out with guys like George who know the numbers. Get the real numbers, the facts. Because I can talk to you about cash flow and all those things. George is better that than me. The thing I'm static about George, he is a hardcore teacher. He really wants you to learn. Okay guys, we've got 10 seconds left. Can't wait to show you a great, amazing session tonight. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome, Freedom Fighters. Freedom Fighters, woo! If you're watching, please type in hashtag live and uh, get your little paws out and type in hashtag replay, right? Hashtag Which replay. So guys, um, we've got a really good session tonight. We've got Adrian Cartland coming to talk to us and he's my tax lawyer. He's very good at what he does. We're gonna be talking about land tax. He's a legend. He's a legend, he's a legend. Now what I was gonna do guys is, um. What I'll do is I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to type it in the chat. If you guys actually click on that link, you can actually um, join and I can see your name when you when you um, type in and then I can see you, which is really good. Okay. But um, now one question I've been getting lately is, is the property market going to crash? Who wants to know the answer to that? Type in if you want to know the answer to is the property market going to crash and what's going to happen? So some people may have seen my no go zone list in the paper recently. So I've been on channel nine, channel seven, um, realestate.com.au, news.com.au, sitting morning Herald, the Herald Sun and the advertiser all around Australia talking about property, what's happening. And um, it's been interesting. And I've been talking about the no go zones where not to invest. And I'm going to touch on that later. But what I've got is I've actually got Adrian who's going to take over from Belinda. Thank you, Belinda. No worries. I'm going to call myself. Lovely seeing you. Enjoy. No Adrian, how are you? And welcome. Okay, I can't hear you, Adrian. That's okay. Um, so we've got Adrian Cartland, and Adrian is very, very good at what he does. And it's going to be very exciting to uh, hear from Adrian. Um, if you press the little settings button, you go to audio and you can check your audio input that's what it normally is okay i'm gonna go hd and i'm gonna look at this much better there you go okay so guys a lot of people have been talking about no go zones and while we're waiting for adrian to get um get this sound working and speak at his um microphone i'm gonna talk about no go zones so what I do is I produce a report every quarter and I talk about the hundred list of hundred areas that are no go zone. And people ask me why are these places no go zone? Well, Adrian, how's how's it going? You're still not there? Or you can type in the chat if I can't hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Is that better? Yep, but it's very faint. Very faint. Oh, okay. Is that is that uh, what if I just talk loudly? Yep, if you talk loudly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, put this, I'm going to put this right up. Hey, guys, can you guys hear Adrian? Okay. Who can hear Adrian? Can you guys hear me all right? Anyway, hopefully they'll do it, but we're going to have a chat. I can hear you, mate, so that's the main thing. So welcome, Adrian. Thank you very much for coming on online. And what we're going to, what we're going to talk about today... Yes, glitching out a little bit. Yes, um, your internet connection. How's your internet connection? Oh, you're better. You're looking better now, mate. How's my yeah. internet connection? Yeah, my internet connection. Am I glitching out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, your internet connection's yeah. um poor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me let me try something else. That's okay. Guys, anyway, let's talk about no-go zones. So what I do is yeah. I publish a report every quarter 
and we talk about the no-go zone. And um, I talk about where not to invest. And a lot of people, you know, freaked out about it. You know, one of the one of the suburbs I pegged out was actually Coburg North. And I've had quite a few people reach out and said, Coburg North, we love that suburb. Why in the hell would you put it on there? It's had a lot of growth. And yes, it has a lot of growth. And that's the whole point. It's had a lot of growth. And that's why, let me just take Blinder off here. Remove guest. That might, see, Adrian, you're on red. Your internet connection should be green. So anyway, so basically the reason Coburg North is such a no-go zone area, I'm going to give you an idea about what I do and how I actually um, do my research is a lot of it's to do with the councils and what the council approved and don't approve. And the Coburg Nerve Council is next to an industrial area. And what they've done is they've been pretty lax and allowed people to just build lots of developments and a bit of a concrete jungle, not enough greenery and not a very pleasant place. And part of the reason it's no goes on as well is because it's got a low vacancy rate. And the vacancy rate on it is pretty low. And Adrian, we've got Adrian, he's a bit frozen at the moment, and hopefully he'll come back. And when he comes back, we're going to have a chat to him. But until then, you got me, you're stuck with me, guys. And look, he's green. Excellent. That's more like it. Yeah. Adrian, you're green now. Green is good. I'm green. Great. And, and and can you hear me all right? Perfect, mate. That's much better. Yes. Now we're talking. Right. So, okay. So, yes. So, Adrian, um, Queensland have changed their tax laws. Now, what's been happening recently is I've noticed that a lot of state governments since COVID have been jumping on the bandwagon and trying to make money out of property investors. Yeah, totally. Now, South and Australia did it, Victoria did it, and now Queensland have jumped on the bandwagon. And so, and, um, uh, so first of all, all the state governments and all the, all the federal governments have spent way too much over the last couple of years, like an insane amount of money. And we know that at some stage, they're going to have to get that money back. So they're going to have to raise taxes. It is, it is guaranteed. We're going to have to increase in federal taxes. We're going to have to have increased in state taxes, and yep. whether it's immediately or in the future. Um, the, the, um, in South Australia, um, it was the worst tax reform I have seen in 20 years. Yep. Um, and, um, the, and the reason being is they said that it was a, um, an, a change in, to, to close an anti-avoidance loophole Mm -hmm. And instead, they did a total rewrite of the act. Now, normally, when you say, we're just going to close a loophole, do you know who hears about it? Like, just tax nerds like me. Yep. You know, and, and what happens is it'll have bipartisan support, both, you know, the, you know, the Liberals, the Labourers, Green, everyone just waves it through. No one cares. A bunch of tax nerds will argue about it. And, and, and that's it. Um, and they said that's what they're doing in South Australia. And then they, then they did a total rewrite. Now, in... Uh, so it was really interesting when um, um, I had a chat with George uh, a couple of weeks ago. He sent me this article and says that it was headlined um, Queensland changes its tax laws and no one should invest in Queensland or something like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and you're like, Adrian, is this serious? Like, what's happening here? And I said, well, no, they're just, um, this isn't right. Like, they, they haven't done anything crazy and they're, they're not anywhere near as bad as South Australia. Um, so... So let me just go through what what this is happening because there are actually a couple of headlines that say like no one can ever invest in Queensland again. Um, so, Actually, what, can you turn off this light, please, yeah. to see how the light looks? Sorry about that. Now, one thing I wanted to quickly say about South Australia. I mean, we had a Labor government for was it 16, 20 years straight. Mm -hmm. Liberals fought to get in. They really fought to get in. They finally got into power. Mm -hmm saying, you know, they're in for businesses and entrepreneurs and investors. And the one thing they did is they really screwed everyone that's got more than one property with, with tax credit. And what happened was everyone said there was going to be, there were going to be a one-term government because they totally screwed that up. And actually what happened, they got voted out and they were a one-term government. Yeah. Like they attacked their core constituency. So people say... Um, uh, uh, and, and they didn't quite understand this, I don't think, that 
Um, the actual headline rate of land tax, like the highest rate of land tax in South Australia, has gone down. And, um, uh, and so they say, look, we're reducing land tax. If you own a shopping center that's worth $100 million, your land tax has gone down. I have clients that own shopping centers. Their land tax rate has gone down. They pay less land tax. But if you're a mum and dad with four or five properties, that's so what happens is, as always, the middle class end up shouldering the burden of taxes and everything else like that. And that's what I didn't like about it because we need a strong middle class. And what they did is they gave all the big fat cats up the top a saving, gave yeah. the people down the bottom that haven't got many properties the same, but the middle class got screwed again. That I mean, totally. middle class pay most of the taxes, do most of the work, and that's just the way it works. And we're here to save the middle class because we're freedom fighters, we're a community of investors that are fighting for freedom for ourselves yeah. and our family. That's what we're doing. And yeah. so now, um, and then what I want to do is touch on Victoria. Mm -hmm. so, so, so can I just talk, talk because what, what actually happened in South Australia is 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 sort of relevant to 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 um, uh, to Queensland and and, um, and so what they did is, is is the way they screwed the middle class is they said um, um, people who um, uh, they're going to aggregate trusts um, and um, uh, so, so in, in South Australia, um, you now have to list off who are beneficiaries. Um, if you don't have beneficiaries, uh, like so you, you won't have the, um, to, except for old trusts, like but before um, they, they introduced this uh, land tax changes. And, and I've done a previous session here with George. Um, uh, we went through all those. So we're not going to go through it all in detail again. Um, but so you can't access the tax-free threshold. So if, if you're owning property in trusts, then you will um, pay like a higher amount of, of land tax. But, but there's actually some um, there's actually some light at the end of the tunnel in this, what they've done. Um, so one thing that they used to do is because there was this, you, you could easily just purchase um uh, property in different trusts or companies and 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 aggregate and separate it out, particularly if you're owning in different and different um, companies. Um, you would um, uh, you know you would pay no like uh, um, you pay a really low amount of land tax. You would access the lot the the land tax three uh, threshold. Um, now what they did uh, and. Um, to try and combat that, they would look at trusts and go, are the beneficiaries of these trusts similar or different? And if they are the same, then they will group them together. And so if you have one trust, one trustee, and it has multiple trusts and the, and the beneficiaries are the same, then they will aggregate them all together. Uh, and and that'd be something you have to be really careful of. And like there are all sorts of changes um, that that you'd need to. <laughs> that was funny for me to. Uh, um, um, all sorts of changes that um, that you know that would constantly be looking at how you know worrying about trusts and you know um, have you set them up in the right way. Now they've said um, we're going to pay you're going to pay a bit of a trust surcharge, like half of a percent. On, on trusts in South Australia and land that you have in trust. And so you miss out on the land tax, the, the, the uh, like free um, threshold. However, there's no worries about disaggregating them. So it means that you actually get a pretty good strategy of you know, property one from like in mum's name, property two in dad's name, sub, you know, or you know, you got to think about um, asset protection in there if you're having in individuals. But as just like looking at land tax only, that's the that's the best thing to do, you know. Um, and then, uh, then you start in discretionary trusts, and it's really, uh, you know, it's it's really simple. Um, you uh, that like that's the strategy, and you're gonna and you don't need to worry about is each of these trusts the same? Are they different? Um, you just you just buy buy in trusts. Yep. yep. Um, and, and this um, now what they've done in Queensland. Um, they have um, they have tinkered with the the tax three threshold. So you know you have about six hundred thousand dollars tax three threshold if you're an individual. Yeah, and, and that's, um, that's with land, not the actual land. land. So a lot of people yeah. think you got a six hundred thousand dollar property, you reach a threshold. No, it's only the mm. land component. Yeah, mm. 
I was looking at a client today and he had all these pieces of land and he written it out for land tax purposes. And it was like $50,000, 49,000, 40, you know, 55,000. It's like, what the hell is this? Oh, it's a bunch of apartments. And each of these apartments is worth like $400,000, but the land value was nothing. Yep. 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 Um, um, of course it's not going to go up in value. It's just going to be, um, exactly apartments. So, you know, yeah. exactly. We want, we, we want a land component to great cap capital growth, growth, but we don't want, um, too yeah. much for the land tax. So you've got to balance it out. Yeah. So one of those things um, uh, people say, uh, you know, you're not creating any more houses or you know, so you're not creating any more land, but you can create land up. So uh, there's an infinite amount of land you can create up. Exactly. And um, recently I, I published the no-go zones, the where not to invest in Australia. And I've been reached out from Channel 7, Channel 9, all these other places. And a lot of people were going nuts because of yeah. what I've chosen. But... I've just said, like Adelaide CBD, right? It's yes. the worst place to invest. It's terrible. Yeah. It's oversupplied. There's so many apartments and units mm -hmm. there. And Perth CBD, the, the CBDs are just, I don't, I've been saying this for a while, they're going to go down, but at the moment, it's uh, accelerating. But um, yeah. so yeah. Queensland, but haven't Queensland decided to aggregate all Yeah, that well, so, 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 is that legal? Can you do that? Yeah, well, so, um, so what they're doing is, is they're, ag so, the, the simple explanation is that they're aggregating your Queensland ownership with interstate. And you go, wait a second, does that mean you're being taxed in Queensland on your interstate properties? Because that would be against the constitution. Exactly. Um, uh, so the answer is no. What they're doing is, is they reduce the tax-free threshold in Queensland by the amount of interstate land that you have. So if you have $600,000 worth of land in South Australia, then that then your Queensland tax free threshold is reduced. Now that if that's not taxing land in South Australia, it's just um, reducing tax free amounts that you have in Queensland. So that's that, how they do it. Okay, so I really think that is just terrible. Like how that's just I'm surely that's illegal. Someone needs to fight this. You can't. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit like me saying, okay. Um, you live in Australia. We're going to look at your assets overseas, and we're going to tax you. No, um, we're going to get your tax free threshold. It's a bit like, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think you get taxed in. You know, you get taxed in Greece. You get, um, and then, and then Australia taxes it, and then you know, US taxes it, and you know, someone yeah. in a boat taxes it. Yeah, luckily, I mean, no one, no one in Greece pays tax anyway. I don't know. If you know. <laughs> That's why the roads are all falling apart, right? <laughs> yeah. So, see, like, I don't see people who have problems paying tax, but everyone is happy paying a fair amount of tax. Exactly. Uh, and it's all about at, yeah. Um, and so what? Um, uh, so, so what's happening with, with, with Queensland is, is they've reduced that tax free threshold. Um, so, uh, so if, for land that you held um, uh, interstate, but what you're going to do in Queensland and, and the reason why I, like as soon as I saw these calamitous headlines, I was like, well, but this isn't like this is the same kind of thing that was being dealing with in, in South Australia. You can just have land in multiple trusts. Exactly. You know, if you want to access that tax free threshold. Now, um, in Queensland, they have a lower tax free threshold for trusts, which is about three hundred thousand dollars, but that's still the land value of a property. Exactly. So all you gotta do is get multiple trusts, but the deal is um you get the get it in the wrong trust and you're not getting your tax deductions which makes it hard and after this we're going to talk to our private group and explain how we can actually get it in a trust and also get tax deduction at the same time which is important and, and and you have to be careful with the queensland trust so there's there's a number of different um tricks with with them so for example um uh depend um uh to, uh, trusts with the same trustee with multiple trusts on it if they're for the same beneficiary, then they can be um, uh, exactly. you know, treated as as one trust, and so they can be aggregated together in the same way that we used to we used to do this in South Australia. Yeah. Uh, and and in, and the definition of who can be a beneficiary, it doesn't look at your class of beneficiaries; it looks at the default beneficiaries, but can also look at who you distribute income to. So you know, if you if you are holding you know, one trustee with um, uh, and had two trusts and you know, and therefore a different property in each trust, and then you distributed you know uh, profits from it in in one year to the same person, you might end up with an aggregated um, uh, uh, wow. uh, 
not aggregated for land tax purposes. So it's something yep. you need to pay uh, attention to. And, and so really, at the end of the day, planning your real estate journey and how you buy things and what entity is so important. A lot of people don't realize this, but um, also what entity you buy it in also affects about asset protection. And mm -hmm. so really what some people, what they do is they go willy-nilly and buy property in their name or buy in a company or a trust without getting the right trust, the right structure, and then mm. they're financially screwed. One, they're not getting tax deduction. Two, they're paying to land tax. Three, they've set themselves up to get sued and it's on to steal all their money. And yeah. at the end of the day, you've got to protect yourself from all of these things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's um, like asset protection is like insurance. You know, you don't want to you don't want to ever have to use your insurance, but if you do, you really hope it's there. Um, exactly, exactly. And um, next week, we're actually going to be talking about asset protection. Was it next week or the week after? Uh, I think it might be next week. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, the 11th, the 11th. Oh, there you go. Now, I wanted to uh, just uh, do a bit of announcement also. I'm here in Melbourne at the moment. If you notice, I'm in a different place. I'm at Blinders House. And I've just spent the last two days shooting Channel 10. And we're shooting a new show called Build to Buy. For our Adelaide members, we're actually um, we're airing on the 20th of August, the first episode, at around 2 o'clock. So I'm going to be inviting our Adelaide members to get together and, you know, watch the show and watch me on TV with Walt. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's excellent. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and then I want to talk about Victoria. Mm. So Victoria, um, they've gone into a lot of debt. They've got more debt than any other state in Australia, yeah. big time, because they closed the place down. And, you know, a lot of people aren't a big fan of Dan Andrews. <laughs> and what he's done, what he did during that time is try to grab cash off the middle class of property as well. Mm -hmm. And they created the windfall tax. Don't know if you're very much aware of the windfall tax. No, no, I'm aware of the windfall tax, but do you keep going. You do, you, yeah, so, right? so I've got a client. Who bought a property for nine hundred thousand? Um, it's about to get rezoned, mm. so it's going to go up to about twelve million. Yep, and he's going to have to pay six million to the government because of his windfall. Yeah, um, six million dollars, like yeah. to wow. rezone. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely nuts. Absolutely um, nuts. Is that to me, it's max of communism. Or something like that. It's not. Yeah. Um, it's so. I got a, I got a friend um, from a, uh, from from Kenya, and he and and I said, you know, is there much much corruption in Kenya? He's like, yeah, yeah, there's corruption, but it's also corruption here. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, it's a different type of corruption. Like in, you know, he's like, a, um, and he's lived in various African countries. Like, it's one thing to to um, go to a checkpoint uh, or be pulled over by cops, and they say, hey, look, we're gonna, you know. We're gonna. We need you to pay us a fine. You, you pull out some money and you, and you give them money, and they disappear. That's that's bribery. It's corruption. It's like there's, you know, um, you know, people people want to get um, get a building built. They rock up with with some money, give it to the relevant minister, and and corruption. Okay, here we have a different type of corruption where if you wanted to get a building built, you don't rock up with a, a brown paper bag. What you do is you work out what the minister wants and you pay someone some kind of consultant like an insane amount of money yep and then they will work out the pieces of paper that you have to give to the government uh, yep. and then that is is your like corruption fee so no, totally, a, it, it totally true look at china china want to build a bridge they go we're going to build a bridge here a month later they've got a bridge i'm um, here in australia we're going to be a bridge we get a committee we consult, muck around. Ten years later, we've changed the plans again. We've gone back to council. Yeah. It's just like it, um, we, we. I, I look. I think you need a certain amount of red tape to keep things safe, but we go overboard. That's the fact of it. We, but but today we could never dam the snowy, uh, build a snowy hydro. We could never, we could never send someone to the moon. Like yep, yep, uh, yeah, yeah. That's right. So guys, um. Anyone that got any questions, please type in, in because we need to go to our private uh, group with um, the Black Belt members pretty soon. We've still got a couple of minutes. We've got three minutes left before the admins. Yeah. So, well, 
when, when we're just talking about different jurisdictions, one thing I just just, just want to say, um, if you're in New South Wales, be very careful with buying land in trusts. Um, like I've had some clients who have um, who have bought land in New South Wales. They've got a, a I don't know, like a, a lawyer from interstate who doesn't understand, buys it in trust, and then pays a trust surcharge. Hell, I've even seen lawyers um, from, from New South Wales um, purchase land in, in trusts in New South Wales and pay the trust surcharge. I'm like, <laughs> Crazy. I don't, I'm like, this is where you live. Like, don't, you know, they're property lawyers. I'm like, isn't your brain switched on? Like, um, so, yeah, yeah. so, yeah. yeah. Well, luckily you're switched on, which is great. Now, guys, um, what we're going to be doing, we're doing a training, a private training on asset protection next week. And what I'm going to do is for the people that want to get access to this, if you type in hashtag asset protection, I want to give you guys exclusive access to our inner circle membership and what we're talking about with asset protection. This is amazing stuff and really powerful. Now, Adrian is an expensive lawyer per hour and you're getting him here for nothing. So you're very fortunate. So just type in hashtag asset protection. Whether you're live or you're watching the replay, and our team will reach out to you and add you and give you that free training, which is going to be great. Yeah, um, like asset protection is huge, um, particularly like the like um, everywhere in the economy. There's just so much, so much risk. You know, I, I'm seeing builders who aren't like you know they, they're just not getting the cash flow through, and I go, you know what? In 12 months' time, you're going to be under. You know, um, I've got clients coming through. And um, the the tax office, after not chasing them for you know a, a period of COVID, you know 12, 18 months, they're they're out there. They've been hiring hundreds of new people in collections. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. So it, yeah, uh, because builders going broke, and this this is one question on everyone's mind. And I want to allay your fears and just tell you what's going on. Um, the media is saying there's going to be a massive property crash, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people are managing, you know, you buy a property and suddenly it's just knocked down, it's gone, goes down by 50%. When when the media talk about a property crash, they're talking about 5 or 10% um, sort of um, drop, right? Yeah. Now, like look at Sydney, for example. Well, Sydney's gone up 30% in the last two years. Mm -hmm. And let's say we have a crash and it goes down 10%. You could change that title from property crash to property has gone up 20% over the last two years, yeah. right? And if you think about it the right way, like, big deal, right? But a lot of people are scared of the crash, but it's not a crash. It's going to be a correction. And I think, really, you really can't be scared of that because at the end of the day, the only way to make money out of real estate is by owning it. And if you hold back from owning it, you're never going to own it. Yeah. But yeah we're going to get going. Freedom Fighters, thank you so much. Adrian, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me back. Yep. Um, look, uh, interesting facts just for everyone here. Um, Adrian is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu. What, what belt are you? Uh, blue belt. I've been a blue belt. I've um, uh, been doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu for already 12, 14 years. I'm a slow learner. been doing uh, karate for 28 years now. So I'm a third degree black belt in karate. Wow, um, third degree black belt in karate and a blue belt in BJJ. Um, have you ever done the MMA or something like that? Yes, I have the Australian record for fastest, fastest cage fighting knockout. So, wow, look at that, guys. So not only is Adrian good at um, when it comes to tax, he's also good at fighting, which is good. And I like kicking people in the head. Yeah. And so you know, uh, if, if you uh, look at uh, if you Google Adrian Cartland MMA, you'll find a uh, amusing video. I'd love to see that. But you know what? This is the interesting thing. I mean, Adrian fights against the tax department all the time and wins. So that's the beautiful part. <laughs> so so um, the, the best um, client testimonial that, I, that I've got um, – is uh, a, a, cl a client of mine overheard another client talking about um, me in the pub, and uh, and and the other client said uh, the, the tax office was uh, fucking us, and uh, and Carlton Law unfucked us. Ah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. We're off to our we're off to our, our weekly shirt. We'll talk soon. Cheers, mate. See you then. <laughs>